Looks like it's Tyson Bajan time for this Sunday's game against the Las Vegas Raiders. With Justin Fields' news about having a dislocated thumb on his throwing arm, the Bears also signing another quarterback to their practice squad, all directions are pointing at Justin Fields is heading to the injured reserve. And the undrafted rookie free agent out of Shepard may lead the way for Chicago fighting to get their second win of the season at Soldier Field this Sunday. The home losing streak has to end at some time right? Hello and we're back to this episode of Just Another Year Chicago. My name is Dick Rohde. Thank you as always for tuning in. Today I am going to break down this matchup of the Chicago Bears versus the Las Vegas Raiders and this guy right here is going to be a huge factor of how the Bears are going to be able to pull this thing off. Also trade rumors are swirling around that Jalen Johnson might be on the move and a major announcement from us. We are having our first ever tailgate at Soldier Field this upcoming Sunday against the Las Vegas Raiders. Party starts at 9 a.m. Central Time at the Adler Planetarium parking lot right outside the building. We will have freshy organic tequila seltzers and some snacks for you guys while supplies last. No ticket required. Just come on by and bring everyone you can. We would love to see you there. And as we go into this video, please hit the like button. Put your thoughts in the comment section below about this Sunday's game. And if you haven't already, if you please good, hit that subscribe button. So let's jump into this Sunday's game. Tyson Bajit is in as quarterback, and this is how the offense is going to flow. The rookie entered last week's game after Justin Field injury, where he had his first career NFL touchdown. And honestly, he put together what he could as a rookie going in with no offensive line help, a very disorganized offense thanks to Luke Getze and a ton of pressure with the game coming to an end very soon. Along with scoring his first rushing touchdown, he didn't do that bad. 10 for 14 with 83 yards. Getze didn't keep doing screens. They might've done a lot better, but he had a killer interception at the end that really just put a black shadow over the game. But with Bajan in, the offense is going to be ran a little different. He's not as fast with his legs as field, so you're going to see a legitimate pocket passing quarterback. Bajit can break it out a little bit, but not nearly like Fields can, which Bajit in college broke nearly every single record for his school, being a pocket passing quarterback. I am excited to see what the rookie can do, and it could be surprising the world after Sunday's game. The rest of the offense, though, if Luke Getze even has a couple brain cells up there, and if he happens to watch this show, hey, Luke, how you doing? Make sure that you throw the ball to Cole Komet and DJ Moore, please. And if I were you, Luke, I am throwing the ball to Darnell Mooney a ton. You haven't used him at all. No one's really thinking about him. Use him as a weapon. It might save your job. And guess what? The Raiders do have a pretty tough defense, so you might want to bring out all your tricks. Raiders are ranked 11th in total yards allowed, 8th against the pass, but they are 21st against the rush. So, Luke. Here's what you're going to do. One, you're going to talk to Chris Morgan and find an absolute way to stop Max Crosby, who has five and a half sacks and 38 pressures so far this season. You're going to have Darnell Wright and Larry Borum absolutely preparing as fast as they can, depending on who ends up taking him on. Because Braxton Jones still has one more week on the IR, which he wouldn't even play the whole game anyway, because they're going to do a rotation for him. You're going to run the ball with Deontay Foreman a lot, who picked up a lot of yards last week, and I thought he did a pretty good job. And then you're going to have Darrington Evans rip it upfield to the outside with his crazy good speed. And also, you're going to talk to Chris Morgan and make sure Cody Whitehair doesn't do this again all game long. Running the ball is going to be Chicago's best friend this upcoming week against the Raiders. And mid-range passes, not sh stupid short screens, Luke, are going to save your job. Now let's go talk about Matt Eberflus's defense. To start, like I said in the beginning of the episode, Jalen Johnson apparently is being called for by the San Francisco 49ers. He's a Ryan Pace pick. Polls won't feel so bad trading him away. Bears are sitting at 1-5 and five right now. And in a contract year, I would take a few mid-round picks for him. Save cap, get more draft capital, and keep building this thing through the draft. That's what Ryan Pohl said he's going to do. I still trust him. Go check out the last video. But yes, that's what it's going to feel like. And if Jalen Johnson goes, wishing him the best of luck. But yes get more draft capital, and let guys like Terrell Smith get more playing time to develop. But anyway, Matt Eberflus, if I'm you, I'm sending the house against the Las Vegas Raiders. Not the greatest def offensive line in the world. You're going to get a ton of pressure on second-string quarterback Brian Horner, who's probably going to play due to Jimmy Garoppolo's back injury last week. And hey, Brian Horner played for the Chicago Bears in the mid-2010s. Fun fact. The next thing that you're going to do is you're going to find a way for your secondary to get some turnovers. The Raiders have the 24th overall ranked offense. They are ranked 15th, but that's what Jimmy Garoppolo in the passing game, but they're ranked 31st in rushing. They suck. They're going to go with the pass. You need to find a way to cut that off. 
Bears defensive line has been doing a fantastic job over the last couple of games and the linebackers. Shout out to DJ Edwards, who has 70 tackles and ranks second in the NFL at the moment. But you need to stop the pass in order for them to force them to run, and they can't do that very well at all. And against a defense improving that way, it looks good for the Bears. So what are my three keys to the game along with all that? Number one, Luke Getze, you're going to run the damn ball. Bears have the backs to do it. Rip it upfield, chew clock, get first down. Number two is you're going to stop Vegas by getting pressure all over the place with the defensive line. More blitz on the quarterback, more mistakes made. That's how your secondary kicks in, forces them to run. And guess what? They can't run the ball well. Boom. It's called math. Great job. And finally, Luke Getze, you're going to get DJ Moore the ball. When DJ Moore score gets more than 100 receiving yards of the game, Bears score 21 plus points. If the defense can also do what they did against the Minnesota Vikings last week, holding them only to 19 points, which really it wasn't their fault, this game could be in the Bears direction. Put your thoughts in the comment section below. I'm hoping this game turns out well. And again, please come to our tailgate. Make sure you hit the link in the description to find out more. But with that, thank you very much for joining this episode of Just Another Year Chicago. My name is Nick Brody, and as always, bear down, baby.